Hey, it's Daniel Powell Cams. Uh, got some more crazy cam lobes, just killing parts. So stay with us, and uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna show you some, and we're gonna compare them to some other stuff, and uh, and uh, it'll be interesting. Stay tuned. So um, we had a drag race team call us and they are running a special class four speed real small cubic inch extremely high rpm um and they swapped i don't i don't know to maybe the cam had a little wire on it and they swapped to another cam grinder and immediately started having valve train problems breaking springs beating seats up on and on and on the normal stuff <clears throat> and nothing changed but who ground the cam so they reached out they had seen a lot of our youtube videos where we going through a lot of this stuff and dissecting what is problems and what isn't problems and uh <clears throat> so they sent it in and we run it in the cam doctor and uh, immediately we we see why it's murdering parts so <clears throat> let's go to the screen here and let's let's look at this thing so let me turn this acceleration off so this is the intake this is the exhaust these are uh solid roller uh constant velocity you see the constant velocity this is the velocity curve this is a constant velocity area so um you don't i mean sometimes but you don't see constant velocity a whole lot no more most people don't do it that way but some s still do it that way but that's neither here nor there so the uh i mean the the, the everything just looks fine till you turn on the acceleration curve and i've already so this thing has smoothing so we can see it like it is and then we can see it in a smoothed uh um after the program smooths the curves because what happens is i mean let me just show you what happens so if you take the smoothing away you see all of this jagged what that is is noise and you can even see it not so much but i can maybe you can't but i can see it in the acceleration curve also and so what that is 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 noise it's mechanical noise so the the claim to fame for the cnc grinders especially like a landis is uh the landis moves the the y-axis or x-axis moves on uh, fluid and so there's it's not a mechanical connection like a normal lathe or a normal cnc milling machine and so <clears throat> exactly how that works i haven't i don't know but i know it it, it work it rise hydrostatic so with that hydrostatic it cuts down on the mechanical noise that you see here and you still see it it's still there but it's just not nearly as bad and depending on the machine and how well the stone is balanced and you know, belt tension and spindle bearings and on and on and on the better this gets so generally speaking a machine in really 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 good repair that is well balanced is going to have nearly i mean not the same but nearly the same as a cnc from what i've seen so obviously some are better than others because even in a cnc they're still uh, uh you know balancing that has to happen and most of those machines have own machine uh balancers so you can literally see the wheel balance on the screen so if it gets out of a certain parameter to see it you know it'll give you an alarm and then the wheel can be rebalanced 
but but anyway i just wanted to verify that it's i mean it's bad but it's not quite as bad as it looks like it really is um so let's let's turn the smoothing back on so we can actually see what we're working with so if you notice the so this big curve is the acceleration <clears throat> this little curve is the velocity i'm sorry the big curve is the velocity the little curve is the acceleration so the acceleration is, I mean, you can definitely get in trouble with velocity, but you can get in trouble faster with acceleration. <clears throat> so th this is the opening side of the exhaust. And you see that it's, it's like, it's weird looking, it's peaky. Let, let me show you what one should look like. You see how this looks, how it's nice and rounded. So this is what most, and look over here on the closing side, you know, this is what most velocity curves, some variation of this versus this craziness right here. And you can even see on the closing side, it looks different than it does on the opening side. I, you know, I suspect that, I don't know what I suspect, but I, I don't think this was in the design it's probably just poor grinding or, you know, there's some machine problems or I, I don't know. I, I don't know. But what is a problem <clears throat> is the amount. And regardless of the crazy shape, well, and if you see the opening side acceleration is much higher than the closing side acceleration. So if we, let's bring the cursor over here. So the acceleration is, so it's basically three zeros, a three and an eight. Um, from what I see, three zeros and a three and a three is about the cap. On most stuff. I mean, I'm not saying there 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 isn't some stuff out there that could stand a little more acceleration, but for the most part, most people cap it around that that three zeros, three and a three. So this one is almost three zeros, three and a an eight. So couple that. So it's it's got extremely high acceleration on the opening side of the exhaust. Couple that with their turning this thing almost 10,000 RPM. And it, it's just, it's just beating up parts. It's just beating up parts. So the, so, and it's, and it's the same, it's not the same way, but I believe let's, Let's look at the intake. I'm pretty sure the intake's really high too. Let's look at the opening. Yeah, it's, it's pretty high. Well, I guess it'd help if I get the right line. All right, so it's not as bad, but it's still bad. So it's, it's three zeros, a three and a five and a three. So it's, it's still out of the window, right? And, and, and keep in mind that with an ex on the exhaust, <clears throat> the, the closing should really be pretty tender, the closing side, <clears throat> because you got a hot valve and a hot seat. And so, it, you know, if, if you're closing it really fast, you're going to pound the seat out of it just because of the heat aspect. So uh, I think you need to set the exhaust valve down nice to keep from pounding the seats out of it. So either way, and it looks like, let's see, let's see what this side says. Yep, so it's three zeros, a three and a six. So yeah it's uh it is what it is it's it's just too fast it's just too fast and just for giggles let's look at the peak velocity 
Cause you, yeah, boy. So I hadn't even paid no attention to the peak velocity. So it, it's high too. Uh, it's two zeros, a nine, and a two. So usually, um, I mean, I mean that's in the realm, but it's it's still on the upper end of the realm. So so that explains why they're having problems. And so. Kind of like the other video we did with uh, the, the LS cam with hurt lobes. It's, I mean, this is probably, there's probably no application that these lobes are good in. But having said that, sometimes the lobe may not be an actual problem. It's just a problem in this application. So that's one thing to keep in mind, you know, there, there's not a, a one size fits all. I mean, you have to have different load designs to, for different applications. You know, I mean, a, 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 a big high boost application needs a much different exhaust profile than a naturally aspirated uh, max effort deal. I mean, it's just going to be, they're going to be polar opposites because in a, in a naturally aspirated, I mean, you're, you're still opening under pressure, but not the kind of pressure you're going to be opening, uh, with a boosted application, and, you know, with a, with a, a large blower or big turbos, you know, you, the, the valve has to open under tremendous load. And so, whereas in a, a naturally aspirated deal, we might open the valve pretty fast. With a with a under pressure, we're gonna want to really tame that down, or otherwise, you're gonna hurt the lobe, the lifter, the push rod. It, it's just gonna be problems, and we see it in boosted applications, especially like some of these crazy tractor pulling deals. We we do them things all the time, and they're just tearing up the opening side of the exhaust lobe because of the amount of pressure they're having to open under and and for some reason and I don't understand why but but whoever these people are that are grinding originally a lot of these big tractor pull cams they're just using extremely aggressive lobes and they don't live because of that aspect so we have to put stuff on them that's a lot slower to keep the exhaust side in one piece because that's just how it is. So we going to probably, I don't know exactly, but we probably are going to just design some new lobes specifically for this customer's application just cause it's so much RPM and it needs to live. Um, I've got some stuff that will work but it's not the right lobe lift so we're going we probably just going to make some new stuff and and make him a nice new cam that's not going to give him any problems cuz you know he said that before you know they didn't really have any problems and they had a good bit of time on the first cam and it just had a little bit of just a little bit of wear not nothing crazy and so then they ended up with this deal and it's been downhill ever since, but, <clears throat> but you know, but like I said before, uh, you know, it's not demonizing, you know, anybody about, about this deal, but you just gotta have the right lobe for the right application. Um, are you gonna beat up parts and chase your tail for the next ever how long you got it in there? So, all right, hopefully that was helpful. Uh, like, share, subscribe. We thank you so much and we'll see you on the next one.